Hey guys, even here, and it's been about 10 hours since the pre-judging of the 2024 Mr. Olympia pre-judging open division, and at this point I'm pretty sure all of you guys have seen uh, the live stream videos, and I'm sure you were as disappointed as I was, because the live stream was just horrible, however in this video we're gonna take a look at uh, some better quality footage, this one was filmed by a phone, but we got some 4k footage uh, from a Gilco production, you're gonna see them in a second, Second, and we can actually see what kind of conditioning these guys brought I mean it was still obvious uh, comparatively who was leaner than who but we can't really see how on or how off these guys were and you're gonna see that in this video now we have to start with Samson Dauda who surprised me the most conditioning wise from all these guys especially because he changed the coach this year and uh, you guys know that I thought that he has no chance of looking very good without Milo Šarčev, but he proved me wrong, he proved us all wrong. We gotta give the props to his wife and to him, they absolutely brought it. And not only that he was more conditioned than ever before, but also he was freaking full. Like he was definitely full. This is by far the best Samson Dauda we ever saw. He has the size and the fullness he had earlier this year at the Arnold Classic Ohio, but he also has conditioning that is probably even better than the Arnold Classic UK. His waist was freaking tiny, man. Look at this freaking weight taper right here. Actually, the X frame because his legs were super massive from behind. Look at the freaking details in the hamstrings. Nobody had that. Not Hadi, nor Derek. Yeah, sure, uh, Derek had more straighted glutes, but Samson's glutes were actually decent this time around. I think they were probably lean enough, and there is a big possibility that Samson is going to win this Mr. Olympia. I mean, I would still probably bet... Look at this pose as well. Much improved. Much improved abs and thighs. The midsection was in perfect control, and I think he even improved the abs. They were looking better, more separated, more prominent. So, definitely, by far, the best Samson Dauda that we ever saw... Now again, is he going to win the Mr. Olympia? You guys know that I'm a huge fan of Samson, but I don't know if he can win unless he knocks out Derek Lansford. And I don't think he really knocked him out. During the pre-judging, I thought it was like, you know, 70% chances that Derek is going to win and 30% chances that Samson is going to win. But now I'm more like basically 50-50. You know, after seeing these, uh, these videos, I'm going to show you Derek in a second. I think there is a big possibility now that Samson can win this. Hopefully the judges won't care, you know, who is like a better representative, who is from where, uh, this and that, what Derek did uh, as the Mr. Olympia last year. I think Samson is also a perfect representation for bodybuilding as well. He's also quite well-spoken, he likes to travel, he likes to compete often, and you know, he's a big, big bodybuilder, like uh, Mr. Olympia has always been a big guy, and now with the improvements that he made... And the judges actually love to see improvements. So now with these with these glutes and this lower body from behind and also like the back, the conditioning overall, maybe, maybe it's going to be enough. I really hope it's going to be. All right, now let's take a look at Derek. So Derek, I mean, his legs, I think they were improved. I don't think they are worse than last year. I don't think they're actually the same. I think they're better. Maybe not as as much, as better as I thought they would be based on the uh, the video from 5 weeks out at the NPC headquarters. But I think they were slightly improved. But slightly. Very, very slightly. Really, he is very, very similar to what he was uh, last year. Conditioning-wise, fullness-wise, muscularity-wise, he is basically almost the same. I would say there are slight improvements in the legs. Uh, as far as like the details in the in the in the shoulders and the chest or like the arms when he lifts them up, I don't think there is a huge change. And like he, I think he could have been drier. He probably could have been sharper. Like from behind, yeah, he's shredded, but maybe he could have been even more shredded. Maybe he's gonna nail it down and get even drier for the finals. We're working with Hunter Rambo, I think it's it's very possible for that to happen. So if that happens and uh, Samson doesn't improve, then he's probably going to solidify his his uh, number one spot. That's, that's very possible, so if I had to put my money on somebody, I would still probably go with Derek, but my heart wants to say Samson. You know, I would love for it to be Samson, but based on what happened last year, how close it was between him and Hadi, and they still picked Derek, you know, I kind of feel like they want Derek to win, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Personally, I would definitely go with Samson, I would definitely choose Samson, but I'm biased because I'm a huge fan of Samson's physique. Now, as far as Hadi Japan, 
Like, you know, I said he's not in condition. And it's not like he is off, really. But he is off for his standard. Some of you guys said that, like, he doesn't need to be uh, the same he was in the Arnold Classic. He just needs to be the most conditioned guy on the stage. Wrong. Wrong. When you set a standard for yourself, you need to live up to it. We all expected to see Hadi from the Arnold Classic, that kind of conditioning. That didn't happen. And here you can also see it, like... Yeah, here he looks much more conditioned than he did in the live stream, but still, still, especially from behind, you can see that his glutes are not as deeply separated. His back is definitely holding a lot of water or fat, whatever it is. So I think I was right when I was saying that he was uh, running late, that he was panicking. You know, I don't. I'm sure. I'm, I'm. I'm. Look at this, guys. Let's be real. Come on. I know you guys are huge fans of Hardy, but take a look at this. Let's be real. This is not what he brought to the Arnold Classic stage, and this is not as dry as lean as Derek, and maybe not even as dry as uh, Samson in the back. In the glutes, yeah, sure, maybe he has better separation, because Samson, like, doesn't have the deepest separation in the glutes, but overall, you know, for Hardy's standards, with his shape, with his structure, he needs to be spot on, he needs to be really on, he needs to be full and shredded, and he, he missed the peak, he is not at his best. So I definitely have him out of that top two this year. All right, next up we got Andrew Jacked, and we all had huge expectations from this guy. Did he deliver? Chris Asito actually said that his side chest was much improved. Was it? No. Look at the hamstring; it's tiny. It's very tiny. You know, with those kind of gaps, glaring gaps, he will never be a top three bodybuilder. You know, I, I don't know what I was thinking when I was saying that he might be up there. Like, yeah, he's uh, very, very formidable from the front, but, like, a lot of gaps, guys. You know, side poses, back poses, a separation in the glutes and the hamstrings, lower back as well. And honestly, based on what I'm seeing right here, I know the lighting is different, but I'm pretty sure he's not the way he was at the Texas Pro. And he did say that because of his uh, ab injury, uh, he was messed up mentally. And I think that can play a large role in how conditioned you get. You know, Martin Fitzwater, who actually brought it, he's coached by Stefan Kinzel, and I'm pretty sure Stefan Kinzel, you know, is the kind of guy that can, like, calm you down, make you feel confident, make you feel calm, and that's why Martin is just peaking perfectly every time, and uh, Andrew is just not really doing that. I think he needs somebody who is going to help him a little bit more mentally. I think that's the thing. If he was coached by somebody like Honey Rambud or Stefan Kinzel, I would have much higher expectations from this guy, I think then maybe, maybe he would actually be battling for a third, but not this year. Those three guys this year are just really good. So can Andrew Jack plays fourth? I think anybody of those three guys who are in the top six can place fourth, Martin, Hunter Labrada, or Andrew Jack. I would probably put my money on Martin. I think he is overall the most complete guy. Yeah, he doesn't have the crazy freak wow factor from the front like Andrew, but he's not lacking in the in the legs from the side, nor in the conditioning from the from the back in the glutes and the hamstrings. He was definitely more complete than Andrew. And guys, this is Martin's first Mr. Olympia, and he actually might crack the top four this year. He most likely will, actually. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. So I'm guessing that a very close second to Nick Walker earlier at the New York Pro wasn't exactly a punishment for Nick Walker. It was actually Martin being that good. You know, if Nick was in this mix and if he was, you know, like his usual self, if he was on, I don't know if he would be in that fort. I don't know if he would beat Martin Fitzwater. Because Martin is really good, really promising, there is a bright future ahead of this guy. He also has a lot more room to, to make progress, and I'm pretty sure he will. I'm sure he's going to be a top 3 guy at some point. And finally, we got Hunter Labrada, who surprised me big time, big time. Now, I spoke to his coach, Ben Chow, and I was suggesting that Hunter needs to really work on his midsection. That's the only thing that he needs to really worry about. And I spoke about this in my videos, and he delivered exactly what I wanted to see. His midsection wasn't an issue at this show, not at all, especially not compared to Italy Pro. And also, they, they kind of nailed it. I mean, as far as peak, you know, he was conditioned, he was full. I mean, compared to Martin, he had like he has a lot more density, a lot more thickness. Like he looks grainier. You know, he has more muscle. He's just freakier. But Martin is more complete. 
You know, even though uh, Hunter controlled his midsection very good, like, he doesn't have those, those perfect abs. His midsection doesn't look the most aesthetic, but he controlled it, he kept it in at all times, and he was doing a vacuum in not only front double, but in the front lat as well, and I think it really worked in his favor, and I think he has a very good chance of uh, placing 4th or 5th, but worst case scenario 6th, which is also better than where most people actually had him in their prediction, so a vacuum looks good on him, man, like uh, when he pulls a vacuum, there are no problems with the midsection. You know, if he would be able to control it, to keep it like this, like even in the transitions, even when he's walking around the stage, kind of what Hari Japan was doing at the Arnold Classic stage, I mean, Hari doesn't have a problem with uh, the look of his abs, he has perfect abs, basically, but uh, he needed smaller ways to create a better retaper, and he did that by doing the vacuum, basically keeping his stomach in, not really a vacuum, but like he kept the stomach uh, tucked in, sucked in at all times, and that's what Hunter needs to do, even though it wasn't exactly what the Hari did, it was much, much better, and you know, seeing his conditioning now in these high quality photos and videos, yeah, it's very possible that Hunter is going to be 4th, maybe 5th, worst case scenario 6th. And as far as Brandon Curry, you know, I kind of had higher expectations from this guy, I thought he was going to be at least the same like last year or even better since he was hospitalized the day before yeah, last year. And, you know, he was decent, but, you know, compared to 2019 when he won the Mr. Olympia or 2020 or even last year, he was worse. So he is definitely out of that top six. It seems like William Bonac is going to place higher than him. But, um, yeah, yeah, I think this is basically... Uh, the end of Brandon Curry, I mean, maybe he's gonna come back next year if he really focuses in the offseason, you guys remember what Abdullah said, that he was just really not taking things seriously in the offseason, and that's why he had probably had trouble getting in condition and, and like staying big and full, so maybe if he focuses more and does a proper offseason, maybe he can come back, I don't see any like uh, melted body parts or like midsection problems, or like any nerve damage or anything like that, he is complete still, he was just not in condition, and you know, size-wise he was a bit smaller, but like if he was more conditioned, he would be even, even more, even smaller, so I think he needs a full-blown, uh, really serious off-season, if he still has the heart for it, if he still has the passion, he can come back and look better next year, but I don't know if we're gonna see that. Alright, now let's talk about the 212 Mr. Olympia twice now, Keon Pearson, who of course won, we all knew that yesterday, he arguably brought the best conditioning that we saw so far from all these bodybuilders, you know, from all the open guys, now of course he's not as big as these guys, I think he was like uh, 205, so like he was definitely a lot lighter than, than Derek, than Hadi, who are about similar height like him, but he was more conditioned, man, he was really detailed, really conditioned, really complete as well, he had this plastic look, I mean, if he competed in the open, he would probably be, you know, like, top 8, top 7, I can see him battling against William Bonek and, and Brandon Curry, even though he's not at their level of size, he, he, he still has, like, the conditioning, the details, the, the, the quality look, the separation everywhere, and he is not small, I mean, yeah, 205 is not super heavy, but, you know, with his height and his structure, he looks bigger, he actually looks like he's, I don't know, 212 at least, you know, he looks like he barely made the weight, or I would even say if he wasn't 212, maybe I would say he's like 220, I just don't know what he would look like next to the other guys, next to the open guys, but what he brought really blew me away, you know, with that, with that small waist as well, with those details, the midsection is hurting him, the diastasis and like a little bit of a bloated stomach, look at it right here, not very good, but overall, I mean, he amazed me with conditioning and everything. Sean Clarida expectedly still placed second. He wasn't at his best. He was definitely really flat. I don't know what Matt Jensen did. We talked about this already, but he was, I think he dieted down way too much. He lost a lot of muscle, a lot of size uh, during the dieting process. I think that's it. It's not just flatness. But even if he was spot on, he still wouldn't beat Keon. So whatever, you know, he wasn't at his best, and that sucks, it's better to have really good photos from the stage at least, but yeah, he still placed as high as he could have. All right, and finally, we get a little something from Ramon Dino, hours before the prejudging of the classic physique. Now here, he doesn't have the tan on, so I'm sure this is not a recent, it was just posted, but I think this is before the carb up, so here he is very flat, 
I think once he carves up and tries out a little bit more, he's going to look a lot better. He is bringing it. He, he is on. He's definitely on. But he maxed out his weight limit even last year. So I don't think he is going to be like much better than last year. And with the way uh, Wesley Wisters is looking and the way he looked at the Arnold Classic, I think Wesley is going to beat him this year. And most likely play second. I don't think Wesley can beat Chris Bumstead, but I think Ramon is going to be third this year. What do you guys think? Tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up for more Mr. Olympia coverage, classic physique, open finals, and post-Olympia videos. Guys, stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.